Hi guys. Hey. Hello everyone. Uh, we send greetings from Planet Ahead from Brno, uh, Czech Republic, uh, and we do have an author of a new game called Icons of Kiev here. Hello, hi, I'm, uh, I'm David. And this game will be at GameFound. Uh, so, what was your idea to create a game? Yeah. Well, at first, um, I, I, I very much remember the moment it came to me. I receive it from above, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I was traveling. I was tra traveling uh, in a train and, and flicking through a historical magazine, and there was like a very old manuscript. Uh, with old Moravian dukes and I it looked like a puzzle and I was like oh I should make a game about that uh, but unfortunately nobody knows very much about uh, Moravian dukes from 8th century and so I decided to to switch the focus a little bit and uh, then I came up with uh, icons orthodox icons because the theme is thick uh, and and kind of uh, sexy and unexplored because there okay. is no other game about orthodoxy or about uh, orthodox icons. You had the idea in your head for quite some time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember first time you talked about it was like two years ago. Yeah, something like that uh, during the COVID pandemic. And yeah, I uh, because these guys are really experienced uh, when it comes to games because they, they uh, license games and create games. Uh, so I wanted to know how much sense does it make to make a games uh, to make a game these days, and uh, I was very encouraged. And uh, because we were, you know, walking in a park, talking about the game, drinking whiskey, I, I <laughs> must I must point that out. And I was uh, very encouraged to do that. So after two years, almost three years, yeah. here we are with with, the, with a prototype here. And then came the war. Oh yeah, and. Yeah. It was uh, an impulse, right? Yeah, uh, because originally uh, the game was simply called Icons. So it was supposed to encompass the whole of Orthodox world. But the war came and I decided to dedicate it uh, entirely to, to uh, Kiev. And um, I must say um, all the profit from this game, it's, a, it's a basically a charity project, all the profit from this game will be donated to Ukraine uh, because in Yasinia there is a beautiful wooden church with uh, old medieval icons and uh, there is no way uh, those people uh, can, can repair them because that is quite expensive. Uh, so we contacted Father, Father Christian and he promised to help us with the game and so all the profit from this game will be donated to Yasinia in Ivano-Frankivsk, uh, to this old old church, right. and hopefully they will restore the icons. That's a nice idea. So we have to hope you will sell a lot of games. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we can help uh, with it. Uh, so, what's about the game? Well, it's a dice placement, right? Yeah, it is a dice placement game. Uh, I was trying to uh, put the theme as as richly as uh, uh, as, as possible uh, on the mechanics. So. Uh, it's not purely abstract game. Um, so the core of the game are these these dice, and they represent the way your painter uh, divides uh, his time in the monastery, um, because you want to create the most beautiful icon for the iconostas. So every player starts with their own frame, and what you are trying to do is to place some colors. On the frame and as soon as the frame is full let's say I place here this color and then I place here this color right here and then I finish it with this I have nice. created this puzzle and I score points and every time I increase the colors I improve the colors I uh, get points again and part of the game is also getting um, uh, getting some cards these are skill cards which help you to kind of 
personalize your approach to painting. Uh, they give you a little bonuses you can activate. Every time you place a certain color, you get a skill of that color. So there is a little bit of engine building as well included. But, well, let's go back to our dice. Okay. And they work um, mechanically. This is the, the, the very heart of the game. You try to draft them uh, at the beginning uh, of every turn. Uh, you try to draft them as many as possible. That number can be increased when you study. And the blue dice, they represent work. So how, how uh, diligent and uh, how, how much work is your painter able to perform during the day. Or you can take the white ones, which are meant for a relationship and socializing. So with these ones, you can talk to these guys. These are other brothers in the monastery. So you can ask them for help and get some immediate bonuses. Or there is the last, the fiery orange of spirit. That's a, it's a, it's a die of spiritual growth, uh, which means if you pray or if you study, uh, you use this die. And basically, it's used for increasing your abilities in the game. So you have to decide every turn. Do you want to do some long-term planning with working? Do you want to get some immediate bonuses with this? Or do you want to slowly increase your capacity in the game? So uh, it depends what you choose, what you want to do. It's a Euro style uh, game with most points winner. Yes. But there is some twists. Uh, there are some twists. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> the game is... Uh, what twist do you mean? This one. This one. <laughs> All right. Uh, Again, we are back to personalizing because uh, painters are not some abstract beings. I, I didn't want the game to feel completely abstract. You are the painter. And as a painter, you can be tired. You can get dirty. You get way, way too talkative. So you can create a lot of gossip. All of that represents your personal board. So uh, your, your piety is tracked here. And actually, it helps you to, to lower these negative effects. But otherwise, if you paint too much or you talk too much or you study too hard, you always increase these negative effects and they trigger at the end of every uh, round, which you want to avoid as much as possible. So this is your human aspect. And as well, you can roll on the dice. Uh, you can roll sins or you can roll virtues, which means Again, you, you get randomly some little bonuses you place on your personal board and they say what you are. So you can be vigilant slanderer, for example, and you get a little bonus, you get something that goes into your way. Of course, you can, you can go and confess and just toss it away, but it slows you down. Um, so this game is not 100% uh, predictable. You cannot really plan like six turns ahead uh, because little things go into your way or help you a little bit. They alternate the way you play. So um, some hardcore Euro players, they really hate it. But most people, more casual players, really like this little bit of randomness in the game. And I like that too. That's why it's in the game. Yeah. And so, yeah, sorry. It's about drafting the uh, dice, then placing them on the board, getting some paints and uh, ideas and so on. Yeah. And studying and uh, increasing your, your stats. Yeah. And then getting points for completing I icons. Yes. In, uh, in purely mechanical terms, this game is not groundbreaking. You all, all already know pretty much every mechanic uh, which uh, has been used in this game. There, there is nothing entirely new, but we try to, to put them together in a, in a new way. And especially what I think is quite new is actually creating the puzzle. Uh, I do not know any other game which would... There are games which kind of, you know, like Canvas, uh, they kind of do it, uh, but this has never been done before. 
and uh, and the topic has never been done before. This is the very first game about orthodoxy. Okay, uh, there are a lot of components in the game. Uh, a lot of them are back in the box. The box is really heavy one, and it's thick. <laughs> and it's thick, yes. And every every cardboard in the game is is so so. So oh, very solid. <laughs> very, very solid. And we yeah. haven't spoken about the board yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the board. The board is uh, was beautifully illustrated and it's modular, which means we haven't printed anything on the board at all. You can just, you know, take everything away. Why we did it? Uh, because we want to keep it modular. Uh, in maybe if we get lucky and we make a future expansion or if we make a, a single player version of the game and we are currently working on that we do not have to print anything new we do not have to make a, a new new board you just you know we print something in here you place it there we just change what's on the board so uh, it's unusual i get it uh, but i believe it's functional it's functional and it, it looks good Great. So, look at the campaign at the game found, and maybe you can back this project to yeah. do the right thing. Well, there is one thing I should say. Yeah. Uh, we produce the game completely locally here in the Czech Republic, in my home city of Brno. Everything you see here nice. will be produced in the Czech Republic, in the European Union. That means if you back this project, uh, if you are from Poland or Netherlands or Sweden or even further away, I can promise we will deliver the game within six months. Uh, I'm absolutely confident as soon as the project stops uh, and we get funded, within three months, everything is printed out. We, in, a, in a month afterwards, we can just assemble it and just ship it. So you do not have to wait for, you know, one and a half year, two years to get your box from China. No, six months, it's yours. Okay, that's good. So this is Icons of Kiev, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, take a look at Game Found. Uh, it starts on 1st of November exactly. and it runs until... Uh, end of November. End of November. So there so will be thirty got, days. So you got the whole November yeah. <laughs> to back this to uh, back, back this project. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I really like it. Uh, we've seen the development uh, for the last three years, and I'm more than happy with how it looks and plays now. So <laughs> great, it's amazing. So, so, so you can back this independent project with uh, this nice charity idea and try the icons of Ky Kiev. Yep. Yep. So, bye guys. Bye. Bye bye.